Today, I'll be going over Chapter 12, Kinetics. So what is kinetics? Well, kinetics is related to the reaction rates of chemical reactions. So what is a reaction rate then? Well, a reaction rate is simply... It's simply a change in the product's concentration or reactant's concentration over some period of time. So it can also be shown as the change in concentration of some compound A over the change in time. So if I were to show you a graph like this, where the y-axis is the concentration of A and the x-axis is T, if it was a reactant, then that means the concentration would slowly decrease over time. But if it was a product, then the graph would be something like this. And in the AP Chem curriculum, we will only be looking at the forward reaction. So hence, the reaction rate for a uh, reactant will always be negative, and we will only be considering the change in concentration of the reactant. We won't be considering the product's concentration, or else that would make calculations a lot harder. So. So now, let's look at an example. Let's say we have two moles of NO2 that decompose into two moles of nitrogen monoxide plus one mole of O2. And you were to show the relationship between the reaction rates, which is essentially the change in concentration over a change in time. Well, if I were to draw a graph, it would be something like this, with the y-axis being the change with the concentration of A and um, the x-axis being time. And did this A is for any compound in this case. So for NO2, it would look something like this. And since it's a reactant, that means the concentration slowly decreases over some period of time. And since we're only considering the forward reaction, all the reactant will get used up. So at some time t, its concentration will be zero because it has been converted to all the products. And in this case, 2NO may look something like this. And you may be wondering, would O2 be the same uh, graph as NO? Well, that is not the case. Since only one mole is being produced, compared to two moles of nitrogen and uh, monoxide, the reaction rate is only twice as fast as being produced. And this is uh, related to the stoichiometry between the two compounds. As you can see, there's two moles of NO2 here, and thus the um, change in concentration for the O2 is only half as fast as the change in concentration for NO. So you can also determine that the rate of consumption of NO2, rate of consumption, is equal to the rate of production of NO, but is only but is, but O2's uh, rate of production is only half as fast as the others. So whenever you have a reaction, any reaction, and you know the rate of the change in concentration of the reactant, you know that based on the stoichiometry, that the difference will only be half as fast if only one half as the number of moles are being produced. Now, we've considered the forward reaction of many of that uh, example reaction, and we've defined the rate as the change in reactants concentration over a change in time, and that can be expressed as the change, which is negative in this case, because uh, the change in the, the reactants concentration will slowly decrease over time, so it's the change in concentration of compound A over a change in time, and this can also be expressed as K times the compound A to some power n. So what is K? Well, K is simply a proportionality constant. It has no units, and it's all, and it's and it does have units, but its units are solely to cancel out the units of the concentration of A's units in order to equal the uh, units of uh, rate. A is simply the compound and its concentration, and n is the order of the reaction. And it different, and it shows the um, relationship between the concentration and the rate. And the order could be any number, but in AP Chem, it will most likely be 0, 1, or 2. And so, 
This shows how the rate depends on concentration of reactions, and it's called the rate law. So, now we'll discuss about two major rate laws in the AP Chem curriculum. The first one will be the differential rate law. And the second one will be the integrator rate law. So what is the differential rate law? Well, in this case, concentration is independent of rate. But in the integrated rate law, concentration is dependent on time. So, in the differential rate law, rate depends on concentration. But in integrated rate law, concentration depends on time. And thus, you will derive two different equations for both of them. For a differential rate law, this above equation will be most of them. And also, be caution, if there's two reactants in your reaction, then that means this, let's say your reaction was AX plus BY yields CA plus DB then your rate law for this reaction would be K times the concentration of A to some power N sub 1 and times the concentration of B times uh, times N sub 2. So now, let's go over what integrator rate law is. So there's three types of common integrator rate laws, three types, and they're called the zero order integrated rate law, the first order integrated rate law, and third order integrated and the second order integrated rate law. And these three will be the, the only ones that will go that will be gone over in the AP curriculum and these are the three ones that will show up on the AP test. And I, and for the Calc students, this is a simple derivation of the first order integrated rate law if you don't want to memorize formulas like me. So we know that rate is defined as the change in concentration over uh, of A over change in time. And this is another word for uh, this. This is also this can also be viewed as a derivative, and that's the slope. And we know that this equals K times A to the power of N. But we know that this is the first order integrated rate law, so we let N equal 1. And that's simply the concentration of A. Now this is a differential equation, so if you were to solve the differential equation, you would see that the change in concentration of A can also be written as negative dA, and the change in concentration of T can also be written as dT, and this equals K times the concentration of A. And if you were to bring the dA's to this side and the dT's to that side and uh, differentiate, it would look something like this. And then your final equation for this would be ln of A, which is the concentration, is equal to negative kT plus C. And the C is a constant, and two integrals will yield constant, and a constant minus a constant just yields another constant. But if you let time t equal zero, then C would be the initial concentration of the whole reaction. So the formula for a first order integral rate law would be ln of A equals negative kT plus the concentration of ln a sub 0. And what is a half-life? Well, a half-life is simply when the final concentration is half of the initial concentration. So what is the formula for this? Well, it's T1 half equals 0 0.693 over k. And you can also derive that from the equation that you found above, and that can be shown as this. Since you know that the final concentration is is half of the initial concentration, then you know that ln of A minus ln, uh, well, since you know that the final concentration has to be A sub 0 over 2, and this is initial, then you bring the ln of A sub 0 things on the left side, and you let negative K times T 1 half. And this, by your logarithmic properties, will simply be ln of A sub 0 times 1 over a sub 0 and that becomes ln of 1 half and t 1 half is equal to 
ln of one half over k. And the ln of a decimal will always yield a negative number. So thus, the, plus, the negative signs cancel out and you get, when you simplify ln of uh, a half, it's 0 0.693 approximately, divided by k. And that's the half-life. So now, you may be wondering, well, this is a first order integral rate law. Then what is uh, the second and the zeroth? Well, the second and the zeroth order rate law are this. So the zeroth rate law would be the concentration of A is equal to negative KT plus the initial concentration of A. And the second order rate law is equal to 1 over concentration of A equals KT plus the 1 over the initial concentration of A. And the respective half-lives for both of these equations are for the zeroth order rate law, T one half is equal to the initial concentration of A over 2K. And for a second order, it would be T one half is equal to 1 over K times the initial concentration. So now you may be wondering, well, at least uh, I, I was wondering, that why is it called integrated rate law? Well, you're integrating the differential uh, equation, which was what we found as rate is equal to the negative concentration of A change over change in time is equal to K N R two K my bad K concentration of A to some power N, and thus when you differentiate this, you get an integrated expression, and thus it's called the integrated rate law. And on the AP test, they might show you the graphs of this for a reaction. The y the y So here are three graphs for the integrated rate loss. Here's the first order, here's the second order, and here's the zeroth order. Now on the AP test, they might give you for a chemical reaction three different of these graphs plotted. And for, let's say, the first graph may look something like this and the second graph might look something like this and for the third one it might look something like this well in all three of these situations they plot different uh, graphs and on the AP test you will be asked to identify for the reaction what order it is so how can you determine the order given these three graphs well you know that the order of the reaction will be the one that has plotted a straight line and in this case the only one that has plotted a straight line is this one so you know that the on the AP test, whichever one yields a straight line, a straight line, the order of that reaction will be this. So in this example, it would be the zeroth order. So just remember, whichever graph, when plotted versus time, uh, yields a straight line, that will be the order of the reaction. And you can use that to solve the rest of the parts of the question.